that was the buck. Waited all season for that three second window. And then finally, right at last light, he stepped out, took the shot. As a matter of fact, here's what happened. One blade of that broadhead hit the leading edge of his shoulder and the other blade hit a rib. The one blade broke off, twisted the arrow, it angled down. Bad hit. We'll never find that buck. Let me show you something. So step into my shop. We're going to do a little science on this one. Mechanical broadheads, there's some really important things you need to understand about them. And we're shooting them largely because they fly so good. It's the accuracy. That's why we're shooting them. But mechanical broadheads come with kind of an Achilles heel, a weak point. And here's what that is. Broadhead blades are made largely by the same process. It's called a strip grinding process. 95% of all broadheads that you're shooting, the blades are made this way. Here's what they do. Imagine a big roll of about half inch wide steel rolled up like a ribbon and they pass it through a stamping mill, stamp out the design of the blade, and then the outside edge is sharpened and then they're on this long strip. Now, you're familiar with something that looks just like this, done by the same process. Look here. This is my utility knife. You probably have one like this. This utility knife is made, the blades are made with a strip grinding process. This edge is very sharp. And this strip of steel is designed with it's stamped with these little cutouts. Now here's why it's stamped that way because after you use up one of these blades this one here you take and you simply snap this blade off and you're down to the next one. These this steel is so brittle it kind of resembles glass but in order for it to snap off, it has to be brittle. There's no question that this is the cheapest and easiest way to make broadheads, but the blades end up being brittle. That's the strip grinding process. But you see, <laughs> these blades have to be brittle. They have to break, but we're bow hunting. So do you want to shoot brittle blades? Seeing is believing. Let's find out. Here's a good broadhead. Kind of a little willowy blade. Put a little bend on it. Snaps right off. Same as this. These are, these are famous here. This is that slip cam blade. Let's just get a hold of that one and see what happens when we put a little bend on the blade. Ready? There it is. Broke right off. See that right there? Let's try the other side. Let's see what happens here. Ready? Hear that break? Broken blade. Let's try this broadhead. You may recognize that one. It's a little dirty because I shot this through an elk about four weeks ago. Complete pass through. Got a rib going in and a rib going out. But let's see what happens to these blades. You see, there's a story behind this. Wow, where's the noise? Nothing, nothing broke. The blade didn't fracture. That blade is still intact. Let's try the other side. Because, you know, we might have just gotten lucky. This is a swacker, of course. Let's try this one here. Let's just bend it a bit and see what happens. My goodness. 
I bent that over to 90 degrees. Let's go all the way to 90. Oh my goodness. We bent that blade to 90 degrees and it's still, it's still no breakage. This is the story I want to tell you. Listen closely. You see, these blades are not made with the cheap strip grinding process like these are, okay? Not made the same way. This broadhead blade is designed to pass through the tough stuff. So how did these Swacker engineers design blades that are so tough? You see, they're not using the strip grinding process. They're not making utility knife blades. They're building broadhead blades that can flex and bend in order to kill white-tailed deer or elk or bear or whatever you want to shoot. You see, they use a process where these blades are stamped out, sharpened, and tempered. Now, once they're tempered, they're tempered to a certain degree to where they have flex in them, to where they're not going to break off and you're not going to lose that white tail. It can, it can hit a big bone and bend and go around the bone and still be cutting with the same cutting surface that you had originally. Now, do they very often bend? Well, I can tell you what, I've only ever, ever bent one or two blades and it was only these bone chisel blades back here and that's going through steel. I've never, after two years, of hard testing on these broadheads in shooting labs, I've never lost a blade. You see, that design for a flexible blade is important. Look at this. Here's a, here's a flexible blade. You've seen this on your, on your Gerber tree saw knife, or you've seen flex right here on a bandsaw or a, or a hacksaw blade. You see, that's what you want in your broadhead blades. You want tough, flexible, you want integrity, you want those blades to be there after they encounter something hard. This is the engineering that makes it happen. Swacker, designed by a rocket scientist and refined by the best bow hunters in the world. Some of you are probably sitting there watching this saying, I'm going to go in my shop and I'm going to I'm going to find out how tough my broadhead blades are. Here's a tip for you. Wear eye protection. Yours are going to break. Let's see what it does take to break one of these swacker blades. Holy cow. Just wanted to make sure. What's in your quiver? Let's do a little genealogy here. Utility knife. Oh, I think these guys are all cousins. <laughs>